Hello everyone. This video is to explain why the Raspberry Pi is the messenger of a new generation of computing. I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and the Raspberry Pi adheres to a design that makes it a general computer that are referred to as the Harvard design or the von Neumann design in which it means you've got a processor there but you've also got uh, memory space for programs to run in and you've got additional memory for storage. In the von Neumann design those two are sort of mixed together so that data and program code the distinction between them gets blurred. They're clearly separated in the Harvard design with a bus and the Raspberry Pi and the Mac and the PC and all back in time probably to the ENIAC computers more or less follow uh, one of these two designs and that's what makes a general computer. This is as opposed to merely a controller which doesn't have say the, uh, the storage, the hard drive, the flash RAM and its job is just to control things. It has very little memory and this is where the split between such devices as the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi uh, come into play. So in the hacker and maker community there has long been a device quote like the Rab Raspberry Pi except it wasn't a general computer. It was programmable which made it different. So most controllers are sort of hardwired to the one task that they can ever do and the Arduino was so different because they included a programmable uh, controller. So you could make it do the same thing over and over but that same thing was up to you and it became really big and uh, it's not a general computer because it can't necessarily save locally the, uh, the data and make future decisions based on the data it collected. Controllers are intended to be the input source for things that are more like general computers which is why the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi work so well together. Now the Raspberry Pi demonstrated that this could be done for $35 and I mentioned the ENIAC so the history of computers in a nutshell. There was the Babbage you know difference engine thinking machine which worked on rods and uh, springs and levers and uh, was very slow obviously and could do limited calculations. Then the switches became vacuum tubes. The core trick of computers is switches throwing into two different states. So when that became solid state through vacuum tubes they could vastly expand the computing power and uh, fit it into a room, something that was the precursor of the modern computer during World War II. It helped calculate missile trajectories and stuff and that was the ENIAC. And then uh, the personal computer came onto the scene I guess in the 70s and that was the IBM PC and a whole host of computers like that. They were expected for business but bam they ended up in the home through Atari and Commodore and companies of the like. And then uh, a little company sort of the corollary to, uh, to Commodore in the UK called Acorn uh, said oh, we don't want to rely on Commodore for our chips anymore. It used it, the MOS technology chip which was a uh, clone, a uh, very inexpensive $25 clone of the uh, Intel chips of the day. That cost like $300 and so they were vastly popular used in everything like the Apple II and Acorn said we don't want to rely on Commodore and uh, went off and developed the ARM architecture, spun off into a separate company and then Acorn became Element 14 who is now the top distributor of the Raspberry Pi that uses one of the modern but not so modern versions of the ARM processor. And so computers went from machines to room size to desktop and then fitting in your pocket. The Raspberry Pi, even though the embedded world where general computers have been put into other devices has been around for a long time, it has not been accessible to the common person. The Raspberry Pi makes the embedded world accessible to the common person, puts it into a unit that you can buy cheap. You can buy them as students, have them part of your classes and your courses and uh, not hook a monitor up to it and have a general computer connected to anything you want to control. Add some microcontrollers like the Arduino and pretty soon you're wiring things together that previously you needed a company, a research team and funding to do. 
And these are the earliest days of that. And this is why, despite every vendor's attempt to copy the Pi, you get things like the I, like the uh, Intel NUC, next unit of computing. They should call it the NUD, uh, next unit of delusionment, because it's 300 or $400. And all those Raspberry Pi knockoffs missed the boat. Eben Upton and the Raspberry Pi Foundation identified the opportunity, hit the metal while it was hot, and everything we're seeing now is the dawning of that new age that he made possible with the Raspberry Pi. And I'm here to get some of the best coffee in Inwood at Carry Ons. And thanks for listening to me ramble, and certainly share this video, because very few people know this story. And don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you soon.